I, I've done a lot of different things, but the last 15 years uh, I've been at the Tree Fruit Research and Extension Center in Wenatchee, Washington, as part of Washington State University, and my major area has been working on sunburn of apples. Uh, sunburn is a very serious problem in our area as it is in the Goulburn Valley, and uh, we have uh, identified several types of sunburn and their causes, and then I worked on a, to invent a product to help our growers uh, suppress the sunburn. Uh, there are many similarities because we also have high temperatures and high sunlight uh, in Wenatchee, but I think the temperatures uh, here are a little bit higher, which presents some challenges. Um, we're attacking the problem a little differently. The uh, sunburn protectants like Rainox are widely used in Washington State. We also use a lot of overhead evaporative cooling to reduce the fruit surface temperature. Here I see a lot more shade netting being used and, and some of the progressive growers are experimenting with evaporative cooling. Uh, probably not nearly as much usage of the, the uh, sunburn protectants here at this point. So uh, I think it needs some more testing to see what works best here. It's, it's going to become extremely important to produce high quality fruit. And one of the ways to help do that is to reduce sunburn because sunburn if a fruit sunburns, it also has affected the internal fruit quality, and it often leads to other uh, skin disorders. So there's, there's a whole bunch of things, but I say sunburn's a good indicator that there are going to be other problems. Well, I, I'm going to learn too, but I think the major areas that are going to be emphasized here today are evaporative cooling and the use of, of shade netting. I'll probably say a little bit about the sunburn protectants as well. Um, in Washington State, uh, we're the number one apple producer uh, in the U.S. Uh, it's about a $1.5 billion crop annually in, in our state. And so there's, uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of apples. Some of you have probably visited there. But sunburn is, is one of our major problems. And I know you have more uh, UV uh, radiation or more ultraviolet than we have. And uh, so uh, you put those two together and uh, those are, are two of the, the main factors that cause sunburn browning, which is the major kind of browning where you can have a yellowing all the way through to a dark brown or even a dark tan. Uh, we have uh, actually identified and characterized three types of sunburn. Uh, just very quickly, uh, the, the one that where you get a very dark brown or black spot on the apple, we call that sunburn necrosis. Uh, it's, it, it actually is caused by thermal death. Uh, the fruit gets up to around 52 degrees C on the sun exposed side and there's a meltdown of the membrane. They simply uh, melt down, thermal death occurs, cells become leaky and that's why you get that uh, spot of dead cells. Sunburn browning is the one that I consider under our conditions to be the major type of sunburn, and I sort of mentioned already that uh, ultraviolet, actually ultraviolet B radiation, same thing, it burns human skin, and a high fruit surface temperature are the two ma causal factors uh, for sunburn browning. If you suddenly uh, expose a fruit that has not been exposed to full sunlight, it'll, the first thing we normally see is a bleaching. It just bleaches the chlorophyll out. We call that photooxidative sunburn. I should have mentioned that's the third type. Seems to be temperature independent. We can we can induce it in November under our conditions. And, you know when the fruit is is uh, completely mature. If we turn a fruit or suddenly uh, take some leaves off, uh, that uh, this photo bleaching occurs, and it's visible light. The same light that drives photosynthesis causes it. What happens is the the chloroplasts and, and chlorophyll and all in the the pigments, the photoreceptors in the skin are not uh, adapted to high light and so it oversaturates them and that excess light creates free radicals and other things and it's destructive to DNA and membranes and protein. So uh, we think that one's totally temperature independent. We've blocked out the UV, doesn't matter, it still happens. So it's, it's the visible light that's causing that. We rely, a lot of our growers rely heavily on the overhead evaporative cooling. Most of the new orchards that are going in are evaporatively cooled. And that's really the time to put it in. It's a lot easier than trying to 
come in and retrofit an orchard after the trees are 10 feet tall. We rely on that, and then the other thing is, uh, as a part of, once I understood the causes of sunburn, I turned a lot of my attention towards inventing a formulation that the growers could use. It's a, a wax-based uh, product that binds very nicely to the natural waxes on the apple. Uh, the whole idea was to augment those natural waxes because apples obviously don't have enough natural wax to filter out the damaging UV rays. It's actually a sunscreen, uh, rather similar to the human sunscreens that, that we all use to prevent sunburn on our bodies. If a fruit has been exposed to the high temperatures and stuff that cause sunburn, the internal fruit quality uh, is, uh, is affected as well, particularly the titratable acidity, and uh, we find that the storability and acid taste and all of that gets changed by, by sunburn. Uh, the sunburn protectants have a limit, and if, if you exceed that limit, you're probably still going to get sunburn and the effects thereof. The, the most effective way, without question, to lower fruit surface temperature is evaporative cooling. We use evaporative cooling properly. It's, it's uh, quite effective. It won't completely eliminate sunburn. The, the shortcoming of evaporative cooling is it does nothing to remove the, the damaging ultraviolet rays. The evaporative cooling reduced sunburn uh, about 55%. In that experiment, Raynox was about 45% put the two together and we had 98% reduction in sunburn. Particle films are not rain fast and so they really are not not very suitable to use with evaporative cooling. Do you think that the, the one-off sunburn event in the year is often more severe than when you've had multiple events through the growing season? But I think fruit gets acclimated and, and if you haven't had that acclimation and you get that kind of event you're talking about, whoo! You know, lots of things, bad things happen. And, and the same thing when you have a cool period, I think the fruit loses that acclimation. And then if you suddenly get another spike, that fruit's more vulnerable too. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're watching fruit sunburn, I've had growers call me and say, I had sunburn yesterday and it was cool. How could this happen? Well, I said, do you remember what it was like on Monday and Tuesday? You know, sunburn doesn't appear instantly. Sometimes it takes two, three days for you to see it. So don't be misled by that. You know, you may think you escaped the bullet <laughs> on Tuesday, but on Thursday or Friday, you may have a surprise. With the evaporative cooling, what temperature do you turn them on? What, at what temperature do you turn them on? Let me just quickly tell you the, the four major weather environmental conditions that cause sunburn. Air temperature is one of them. The, the solar radiation or the clearness of the sky uh, wind, if you've got a little wind, uh, you know, if it's not a real hot wind, it actually helps because it stirs the air around the fruit and causes it to cool. And the other thing is relative humidity. If the relative humidity is extremely low, that also enhances the chance of sunburn. Along with fruit diameter, uh, variety, and, uh, and the canopy density, those are the seven things that I think are most important in determining whether you get sunburn. Fruit surface temperature is really the best indicator of when you should turn it on. And if I have thermocouples on fruit, and I know what their temperature is, I would turn the water on when it's 40 degrees uh, fruit surface temperature, 40 degrees C, and I turn it off at 35, and then I just, I just sort of oscillate. And it works beautifully. You, you've got about a five degree margin of, of protection because sunburn browning doesn't occur until that fruit temperature is up to above 45 C. But fruit surface temperature on the sun exposed side is typically at least 15 degrees C above air temperature. And that's why air temperature is not the best indicator for turning it on and off.